The rocket is also a very effective anti-shipping weapon when fitted with a 25-pound head for sinking such targets as merchant ships and lightly armored escorts such as destroyers, flagships, etc. Against these, the basic unit is three aircraft, although normally a number of such sections are used. The attack is made in a shallow 10 to 15 degree dive, and as well as armed sweeps, pre-briefed specified target strikes are flown. Well, chaps, this is the strike. We've got a definite target this afternoon. The latest position, force and speed are on board. It's a fairly lightly defended convoy, and we have to attack certain ships in it. A largish troop carrier and two small merchantmen. I'll hand round photographs of them and of the convoy as last seen in a moment. Now, we have 12 aircraft at our disposal. I'm leading in Y Yorker. The other sections will be led by uh, Squadron Leader Benjamin, Flight Lieutenant Faber, and Flight Lieutenant Kendall. We'll form up at the operational height of 2,000 feet over the airfield. Four sections of three, each in tight wing. Set course and move off in squadron Vic. And when we get near the coast, we'll go right down on the water. Five minutes before our ETA, we'll climb to our original height and sections will again take up line astern, stepped up. On sighting the target, we'll maneuver to get into position to deliver our attack on the beam. At 2,500 yards, I'll give the order to prepare when number three and four sections will fan out into line abreast with me, number two remaining behind and above me. When we're about 2,000 yards away, I'll give the order for each section to deploy into open line abreast, followed by the order to attack at 1,500 yards. When I stick the nose down into the dive, my section will go in to attack the largest vessel. Sections three and four will dive at the same time to attack the other two ships. And section two will follow in behind me, taking the signal from their own leader. After firing, keep strafing break away low over the deck, keep low down over the water on the other side, and keep weaving until you're out of flak range. Any questions on the flying side? Right. Now we'll get down to the rocket firing part of the question. You'll see that there are three main differences between this type of attack and the one used against land targets. First, the aircraft goes nose over into the dive and does not turn into it. This is because of the shallow 10 to 15 degree dive angle used. Secondly, the use of a spaced salvo. The target area of a ship can be divided into two parts. From the superstructure to the water line, dry hits will cause damage and have an effect on morale, but will not sink the ship. Below the water line, an underwater hit will flood a watertight compartment and two or three will sink the ship. The underwater trajectory of the rocket with a 25 pound solid head is very good. It varies in shape, of course, with the angle of entry, which depends on the dive angle. But the rocket is lethal up to an underwater travel of 180 feet when used against merchant vessels. This means that the target, as seen by the pilot, is from the water line to a point approximately 180 feet away for an underwater hit, and from the water line to the superstructure for a dry hit. A rocket falling along here will be lethal, and along here will damage only. Ideally, hits should be spaced at varying depths from the water line downwards. And to get this effect, a spaced salvo is used with the rockets entering the water at different points. This method also allows for errors on the pilot's part in range estimation. If he comes too close, he will get some dry hits and some underwater hits. If he is slightly too far away, he should get some lethal underwater hits. The third point is the use of the common gun, 
RP harmonization. The sight guns at RP are harmonized so that in the standard dive, the shell trajectory crosses the line of aim at a thousand yards from the point of firing, whilst the RP trajectory, ten feet below the line of aim, at six hundred yards. If with a sight on the target, the guns are fired at a thousand yards, then by the time the shells reach the target, the aircraft will be eight hundred yards away. Thus, the method can be used for range estimation. The second advantage is that the guns can be fired at the target throughout the approach. With the sight at funnel height or above, bursts are fired at 1,500 yards. These fall below the point of aim. As the range closes, the shell strikes move nearer to the point of aim, and at the same time, this is gradually brought down to the deck line. When the point of aim and the shell strikes coincide on the deck line, the range is approximately 800 yards. By the time the pilot has noted this and put his finger to the RP button, the range will have closed to 600 yards, and the spaced salvo is now fired, giving underwater hits. At the same time, the guns are still fired. This method of harmonization is peculiar to coastal command. Now see the actual attack, but we'll watch one section of three only. Target ahead, prepare, prepare, prepare. that. 